So what's the difference between a living will and a DNR? I'll often have clients come to my office for an estate planning consultation. And as part of the consultation, they'll bring up wanting a DNR, which is a do not resuscitate order. However, what they actually want is a living will. These documents are not the same, they're quite different. So in this video, I wanna explain the differences between a do not resuscitate order, a DNR, and a living will, and in what instances you might want one or the other. So let's start with a DNR first. So the DNR is actually a form that's created by the, Flor the Florida Department of Health. So it's not a form that estate planning attorneys create. It's a, a government form that you can print online from the Florida Department of Health. This form, in order to be valid, has to be printed on yellow paper, though. It can't be on any other color. It very specifically has to be on yellow paper. It also needs to be signed by both you and your doctor and should include the doctor's license number. The reason it needs to be signed by your doctor is a DNR is actually a doctor's order. It's a very specific order stating that under no circumstances, are you to be provided emergency CPR? So, as an example, you go into cardiac arrest and you need CPR, but you have a DNR, they can't apply CPR. Same with like some type of respiratory failure. No CPR can ever be applied to you under any circumstance. Doesn't matter your age, it doesn't matter your health condition, it simply says no CPR, which is also why doctors don't tend to sign these orders, except for in very limited circumstances, like when an individual is already sick or getting close to dying or in such failing health that they don't want to be brought back if they do go into cardiac arrest or respiratory arrest. So this form, must be seen by a paramedic or a doctor in order to be effective. If they don't see the form, there's no obligation to follow it. So that's what they'll often say with DNRs, it needs to be posted somewhere conspicuous in your house for emergency personnel to see, or you have to actually provide it to the doctor or somebody has to provide it to the paramedic in order for them to follow it. So that's pretty much a DNR in a nutshell. Now, what's the difference between that and a living will? So a living will is a document that is commonly prepared by an estate planning attorney, and it covers many more scenarios than simply resuscitation. Um, it can go into all sorts of things you do or don't want. An important thing to note though, is a living will doesn't apply across the boards like a DNR would. It only applies in the scenario that it's actually already been determined that you're coming towards your end of life, right? So you have some type of end stage condition or you've been in a coma for a while, you're not coming out. So you are nearing the end of your life. And in that scenario, if you're already in the process of dying, you can say, hey, I want you to prolong my life by giving me experimental treatments or if I need dialysis, do that or a blood transfusion. Or you can simply say, look, I'm already in the process of dying. I don't want to be hooked up to a ventilator. I, I don't want to have dialysis. I don't even want antibiotics. I just want you to put me on some pain meds and let, let nature take its course and let me die naturally. It's all about you choosing specific things you are and aren't okay with when you are to, in that process of dying. You know, it could be a week, it could be longer, it could be a day, but do you want your life to be prolonged in that situation or do you not? And you can get very specific and give very specific instructions on it, including you know certain things that you do want and certain things that you don't want. As an example, some people don't even want food and water in that situation or water in particular because it can prolong life or others, the thought of that, it's like horrid. So they say, no, please give me water, give me pain meds, but no, I don't want dialysis or experimental treatment. So uh, you know, it's really just all about specifically what you want. It's your form, it's a legal form, doesn't need to be signed by a doctor. Simply needs to be signed in the presence of two witnesses, and of course you have to have capacity in order to sign it. And a living will is a very, very common document that's used by estate planning attorneys. So why would someone want a DNR versus a living will? Well, the reality is, although, it's a paramedic or a medical professional's job to 
save someone's life and if they're in the process of dying. Um, techniques such as CPR or ventilation, intubation, chest compression, they're not the easiest on the body. They often result in things like serious bruises, broken ribs in some cases, or other medical problems. If you're a person who's already in very poor health, you have an underlying medical condition, or something is going on where you're probably nearing the end of your life anyway, you might not want to sustain that. It might not be the best thing, and in some instances could even end up killing you. So in that scenario, if what needs to be applied to your body in order to bring you back is going to cause more harm than good, then a doctor is going to suggest a DNR because it's not going to be worth it. However, in another scenario, you're a healthy 30-year-old, no health conditions, you're in great shape, but you get in a car accident and you need to be resuscitated. Well, in that scenario, it's probably going to be worth the bruises, the broken ribs, because most likely you're gonna survive and you're gonna be fine. You're gonna go through a healing process, but everything's gonna be okay. So that healthy 30 year old isn't gonna want that DNR. They're gonna want a living will as part of their estate plan, but they're not gonna want a DNR. So it's usually about the person's existing health condition and their age. And it's really important that when you meet with an estate planning or an elder law attorney to go over your estate planning documents, that you're well informed about the difference between a DNR and a living will so that you can make the choice that's best for you. So I hope this video clears up any misconceptions about a DNR and a living will. And if you have any other questions about these documents or other documents included in an estate plan and you're in Florida, don't hesitate to reach out to our office. We're at Cause Law Office, the non-stuffy attorneys, and the link is in my bio.